Uh, on another note, I'd like you both to weigh in on this. I'll begin with you, Shan. Um, you've got an appeals court argument over the president's tax records, mm -hmm. and attorneys for the president and the Manhattan DA argued yesterday over the scope of immunity. How broad is presidential immunity? The district attorney's office asked if the president pulled out a handgun and shot someone on Fifth Avenue. Wonder where they got that from. <laughs> uh, it, would we have to wait for impeachment proceedings to, to do anything about it? The judge then put the question to the president's attorney, who essentially said, correct, the president can't be charged in office. Is the president's attorney right? And how do you think the Supreme Court will see this when that broader question of presidential immunity, if it goes up? Right. Well, in a broad sense, common sense tells us he's totally wrong, particularly in that ridiculous hypothetical that the attorney chose to base on the president's ridiculous hypothetical that he raised in the campaign. A violent crime like that, I can't imagine that the president's going to be immune from it. If it did go to the Supreme Court, I can't imagine they would agree either. However, realistically, what's going to the Supreme Court is much more nuanced and much more complicated. Yeah. They're going to have to slice and dice what actions took place within the time he was president, what actions might fall under executive privilege, and have to weigh that and balance it against what's necessary for the public disclosure. So in reality, these questions of would turning over his tax returns somehow compromise his ability to lead the country, those are nuanced questions which will ultimately be resolved by the court, but not in this sort of a simplistic manner.